So uh, I guess my talk is not on a very related topic to what we have seen uh, so far this week, but uh, it's a work in progress with uh, Nima Razek and Martina Rovedi, and uh, uh, it's work in uh, trying to uh, have the development of the theory of uh, higher categories um, by defining limits uh, in infinity n categories. And so, as you might know, many mathematical objects are defined by universal property, which is often included by that of a limit or co-limit. And with uh, the fact that the infinity, the language of infinity n categories is always more and more used uh, in many fields of mathematics, such as derived algebraic geometry or TQFTs and so on, uh, we uh, think it's worth developing uh, here, using both theory of infinity n categories. And so, the first thing that you can try is defining these limits and co-limits for infinity and categories, uh, and then uh, hope that then you can use this kind of construction to uh, make uh, this construction in infinity and categories. So, uh, in the case uh, n equals to 1, uh, so it was already done, as you probably all know, and uh, already use it, I've seen this week. So uh, limits in infinity one categories have been defined, and but like sometimes uh, some objects are not just defined by a one a universal property, but they need more higher structure to be defined, and and so this is why we also need, for example, infinity two limits uh, and so on. So let me give some two uh, categorical uh, examples of limits. So for example, you have the a Grotten deconstruction, which is some sort of lax co limit, and so in particular, it's a two category called co limit, or you can also have the category of algebras uh, of our two monad, which is also some kind of uh, lax limit, and I'm sure there are uh, other examples as well. And uh, so having these uh, notions of limits in the infinity setting would allow us to do also this construction uh, there. So first, I want to uh, give a first definition of limit, which I call the enriched definition. And for this, I just want to recall how we can see an infinity n category as an enriched category in um, some kind of enriched uh, categories. So for this, I'm going to go back to 1. And so, as you probably all know, a category consists of uh, objects and morphisms between the objects, which we can draw like this. But then, when we talk of a two category, what we do is like also add some higher structure, and so we add morphisms between the morphisms, which are called two morphisms. And so, they are morphisms between the morphisms, and we can draw them like this. And so, in particular, what's happening now is that um, now the morphisms, they don't just form a set anymore, but they form a category uh, together with the two morphisms. And so a two category is something that we can call the category enriched in categories. Okay, so now, so now I'm going to go higher up and so there's no reason to stop here, right? And so we could just also add infinitely many morphisms. And so I can add n plus one morphisms between my morphism. And if I require all these uh, morphisms above level n to be uh, invertible, this is what we would call an infinity n category. And so here, what we can see is that the morphisms now, they don't, they form actually an infinity n minus one categories. And so we can think of an infinity n category as a category enriched in infinity n minus one categories. And so while, when we were defining two categories, uh, this was a well-defined uh, definition here, because everything is more homotopical and, uh, for example, composition is only defined up to homotopy. Uh, we need models uh, to model this. 
And by models, what I mean usually is model category, but I know this one. Okay. So, so I will go back uh, super basic again to one categories. And so if I take a function and we do a function between one categories here, I can define a limit of this function uh, as a pair, a lambda of an object, and a C together with the cone. We sum it out over F and such that uh, for all the objects of my category, this lambda induces a map between the set of morphisms from X to L in my category to the set of cones uh, with some X over F. And so a limit, as you probably all know, is just defined such that this map is an isomorphism of sets. And now if we go up in dimension and we want to do the similar definition but now for two categories, so let me start with a two functor between two categories, then I can define a two limit of f as a pair again of an object together with a cone, but this cone maybe has a bit more structure. And now this map is not in sets anymore because now the morphisms they form a category, and so we refer it to be an isomorphism of category. And so here I just want to unpack a bit the data because. So before we just had so before we just had a bijection between morphisms and cones, and so this was telling us that all the cones could be defined as a composite of a morphism from X to L followed by the limit cone. But now, because we have an isomorphism of categories, we have also a second universal property, uh, which tells us that there is a bijection between the two cells from X to L and the morphisms between cones um, like this, and so every such cone has also some can be written as some two cell from X to L followed by the limit cone. Okay, and uh, one more thing here is that because we are now in categories, we have a weaker notion of equivalences between categories, namely that of an equivalence. So we could also uh, replace uh, this universal property by an equivalence of category, and this is what uh, we call bijunit. Okay, so how does it work now for the infinity setting? So as I was saying before, an infinity n category is enriched in infinity n minus one. So if we start with the case n equals one, then we can see an infinity one category as a category enriched in infinity group rates. So infinity zero or spaces. And so as I said, I need a model for this, and the model I will take is that of uh, of can complexes. So infinity group rates can be modeled by can complexes. And so what do I mean now by having an infinity one category, so a category enriched in kind complexes? So we say that C is a kind enriched category if it has again a set of objects. But now between any two objects, I actually have a whole simplicial set. So and if I want this structure to be an infinity one category, I need to require that this from simplicial sets actually uh, can complex. Okay. And then we can make a similar definition as if we start with some enriched factor uh, into our infinity one category. So yes, then we can define an infinity one limit. As, as a pair of an object together with a cone, a people, uh, an object, <coughs> such 
such that uh, for all objects in my enriched category, so this time the score induces a map between the simplicial set of morphisms from X to L into the simplicial set of cones over F. And so we require, require this map to be a weak equivalence of kind complexes, so an equivalence of infinity group. Okay. Okay, and let's see now how we can just do this for infinity two categories. So, if we take our definition again, now we want infinity two categories to be categories enriched in infinity one categories. And then I can model my infinity one categories uh, by several models. So, for example, I can take uh, Quasi categories are can complexes. Uh, sorry, are complete single spaces. And so now I'm going to use this model of complete single spaces here. But you can do the same thing for uh, quasi categories. And so if I start with a complete single space and rich category. So a complete single space is a single object in spaces which satisfies some completeness conditions. So in particular, I need to require that my category is enriched of a simplicial space. And then I require each of these homes to be a complete single space. And then by taking similarly a functor into my infinity two category, I can again define an infinity two limit as a pair of an object with a cone, blah, blah, blah such that this map, which now lives in simplicial spaces, is a weak equivalence of complete single spaces. And so, again, an equivalence of infinity one categories. So, now it seems like we have a definition of infinity two uh, limits. So, what are we even doing in our project? So, there are some problems with these definitions, um, because in practice, we they are not really usable. So the first problem with the definition I just gave you is that it's very uh, theoretic and it's only uh, defined in this uh, strictly enriched uh, in this strictly enriched setting. And by strictly enriched, I really mean that. Here, like the composition of one morphism is actually associative on the nose. And so the problem with that is that most examples of infinity n categories that we would care about in general, they are not that strict. And so you would need a strictification process or something to be able to use this definition. And this is usually not very easy to uh, compute. And the second thing I've been hiding is that uh, here, I'm actually using some kind of derived home, and so in particular, uh, this derived home, they, they need a cofibre replacement of the weight, so I'm hiding a certain cofibre replacement of the weight, which is also hard to compute in practice. So what we would like is some other definition of limits, which is more usable in practice. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. So is the point that you, you need this model of public spaces that I to formulate this in two days? Uh, it's because I'm working in model categories, but okay. maybe there's a, a more. Yeah, right. So, is that what you meant in the first? Oh yeah, when when I do this, I really need a model categorical sense. So, uh, yeah. I yes. have what is a more technical question, which is free to ignore. But uh, did, what do you mean by six the i? Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> like, yeah, I think it's not it's not defined at the level of infinity one category, except if you do some like cofibre yeah. because one of the way. Yeah, it's like, easily defined for quasi categories, but we were working in categories in which in can complexes, which is. Uh, but there's always an enriched home when you work in, in enriched categories. Yeah, no, but even defining a functor category that has the right equivalence type, I yeah. don't think it's 
that three dealt. I mean, it's not you can near just medium can... which meant. I mean, you want a capital or risk in hand complex, you can choose the hand or capital. Yeah, but I think you can do this with a group iron replacement of the weight, and then like you have yeah. some derived form in the sandwich. Oh. Was shown to be a quinanequus by trial, 
and lead also by Lurie and Douglas Spivak. And then there is another hidden equivalence that goes to complete Siegel spaces, which is which takes a quasi category and basically makes it complete. And this model structure is to rest and here to uh, royal and zero. And so I will call this whole composite uh, matrix N, so like the composite of right and right. And so the comparison theorem is the following. And can be obtained as a, um, a, by two different results, maybe one by real and verity, where they compare the enriched setting and the quasi category setting, and together with a result by an Uh And so, if we start with a can enriched category, and then we take some map into its homotopy current nerve. So this map corresponds to, by, via the adjunction, to a map, oh, I didn't give a name to the left adjunct. Uh, let me go C. So it corresponds to a map like this, uh, into the enriched category. And so what they show is that a limit of F in complete single spaces, so with this internal definition, corresponds to a limit of fb like uh, with in this enriched setting so in can enrich categories and so this is the enriched definition And actually, uh, real and verity, they show even more. They show that this definition in terms of terminal object is model, model independent. And so it can be made into any model of infinity one categories. And it always has the correct universal analogous to the k is n equals to. Okay, so now if we go uh, one dimensional up and we try to formulate a, a similar uh, theorem for two limits. So let's say we start with a two functor and then we ask is the two limit of this functor the same as a two terminal object in the two category of codes over F? then this is actually not, not the case. So this uh, definition that we made here doesn't generate per se to uh, the two categorical setting. And this was already known to some two categorical experts, but with Tinkman, we wrote some uh, really small example showing uh, that this actually fails. And I want to give you some intuition for why it fails. Um, so if I want to define this uh, two category of cones. Again, it's some kind of pullback. And I can compute uh, this two category using this pullback uh, of two categories. And it has those objects, uh, the cones of F. 
And then the morphism, uh, the morphism in my category C that makes the phony commutes. And then the two morphisms, they are simply two cells in C uh, that make again some phony commutes. So, some diagram like this commute. But like, what we can see is that in this uh, two category actually, we do not capture the actual morphisms between the cones from X to F. So like we only see these kind of morphisms between cones, but we don't actually see the morphisms to F. And so what you could think of is like, oh, let's replace it by some left slice or something that this uh, doesn't work either. Wait, sorry, like when you say commute, do you mean up to a cell or actual commute? So, so here I mean actually commute because I'm up to isomorphism. If you are to equivalent, you will need to make an invertible cell. And if you take a natural cell between, it doesn't work at all. And actually you can show that two limits, they do not correspond to the terminal object in this, and both directions don't work. So here, this actually still captures like the first dimensional, like the one dimensional property of the to limit, but not the second one. But the last, uh, the last slice actually has no relation with two limits at all, which was kind of. So I'm sorry. I mean, I think this is a strictness issue here. I'm no, like it's not. A... Of what two limit exactly means now? Yeah, two limits is up to isomorphism, but then right. we also have examples that show that it doesn't work for bilimits either. So it's not a strictness problem. It's really an actual problem about uh, slice, like terminal objects actually not being correlated to two limits. Okay, so then uh, what Brandis and Pare suggest is to actually instead go to double categories. Uh, so let me tell you what the double category is. So a uh, double category is an internal category to categories. So it's, it's a diagram like this in categories. We have some uh, category of objects, a uh, category of morphisms, and then some composition given all by Tonkos, so a target map. And uh, so in particular, this category of objects has some objects, but then it also has morphisms, which we call the vertical morphism. And you can think of it as something like this. But then there is another notion of morphisms, which are the objects of this category. And so we call them horizontal morphism, and you can draw them like this. So there are two different kinds of morphisms, and the morphisms in here they have two horizontal boundaries and two vertical boundaries, and therefore they are called squares. And then uh, this is a category of horizontal composition. And so in particular, you can see a two category as a certain double category, because if you recall, in a two category, the two cells were like globular, but you can stretch it and make it into a square in the following way. And so you can think of a two category as a double category with only trivial vertical morphism. And more precisely, let's say a two category is a double category with discrete category of objects. Okay, and then the theorem says the following. Uh, okay, so, so just, yeah. So if I start with a two functor, Then 
uh, two limit of the filter actually coincides with a double terminal object or just terminal object in the double category of clones of the F. And so again, this double category can be defined as some kind of pullback. So if we use the inclusion of two categories into double category, then we can see these two categories of functions, some kind of double categories, and then we can take the internal home in double categories. And by doing this, we actually get So this has actually non-trivial vertical morphisms, so it's not a two category, but it's double category. So this guy is also an actual double category. It is not a two category, because it has a vertical morphism, exactly the data that we were missing before, namely the vertical morphisms are precisely this uh, morphisms between cones and now we retrieve this like a second part of the universe approach of by doing this. Sorry, can I ask you yeah. which of the other corners of the diagram are two categories still? Uh, the bottom yeah. ones. But well, the, the, the ones above, they have actually not, not sure about the morphism. Okay, and so now we, we want to use this uh, to try to do a similar thing in the infinity setting. And so for this we first need some notion of a double infinity category and some notion of infinity two categories such that um, there is also a canonical inclusion of infinity two categories into double infinity. But, sorry, then may I ask again? Like, yeah. Super confused, like I always thought somehow if I work with infinity 2 or whatever and I, I use the right notion of bicategorical limit yeah. that it should be true that these are just terminal objects in the sufficient weak sense. Are you saying this is false? Is it false because so of some strictness issues? Or, I mean, I think I asked this again, sorry for that. Yeah, uh, so I think it's false in general, but like if for example, you're trying to take a limit in the infinity two category of infinity one categories, then it's fine. And this is because the, the theorem fails in general, but like if you if your uh, category C has some kind of tensor by the isomor the morphism category, I mean, then it actually holds. But like it fails in general. Oh, you're saying because the limit only sees the underlying category. So we haven't really defined the limit to be. Yeah, like if you with, uh, if you just do this, you actually. Yeah. You're actually like taking the underlying uh, limit, if you want one limit or something like this. But like sometimes uh, some infinity two limits, they, they can be defined as an infinity one limit simply because the universal property is actually recovered in some tensor. Yes, but where, I mean, why don't we define everything two categorically and then two product? Like, that's what I don't understand. Where is the norm? Like, why is this fails? No, why, why you say somehow it only sees the underlying one at one category of the Um, Because it only sees the first part of the universal property. So you just have the isomorphism between the objects, like when I was giving the rich uh, definition of the yeah. limit, but not the isomorphism between the objects. Here you're asking it's a two terminal object, so it should be when you have some uh, mapping categories and not to pull them. So yeah, yeah. This should have the second part of the universal property as well, doesn't it? Yes, but it's like still okay. So uh, there's still some kind of uh, second dimension of the universal property there, but it's like very degenerate. And so you, you're actually not capturing this like universal property, like the second universal property, saying something about this morphism between codes, but only uh, specific degenerate cases. So you're really missing something. Okay. 
Um, so, uh, no, I'm lost. Okay, so we want to do the same thing in the infinity setting. And so for this, we first need the notion of double infinity category. And so this is due to outside. And so a double infinity category is simply a single outlet. So an internal category to infinity one category. So a single object in, let's say, complete single spaces. So by this, uh, we mean some simplicial object like this, which takes values in complete single spaces and satisfies uh, the single transition. And then the way that we can see an infinity two category is a double infinity category with discrete infinity one category of objects. So uh, in analogy to the one category, uh, the strict case uh, is we can use this uh, model by Barrick of uh, infinity two categories given by the twofold complete single spaces. And so the twofold complete single spaces, they can be defined as double infinity categories with uh, discrete, but in a more homotopical sense, uh, infinity one category of objects or complete single space of objects. And so again, this would be some simplicial object taking values in concrete single spaces, uh, so that satisfy a single condition, and then also a completeness condition, which basically tells you that the infinity one category of object is actually uh, just a space and plus this like usual completeness condition. And so in particular, uh, we since this is uh, some kind of localization of this, uh, we directly get uh, an inclusion of equal complete single spaces into double infinity categories. So we have an inclusion like this. And what I showed in my thesis was that uh, actually there's a commutative diagram like this, and so in particular, this uh, commutative diagram tells you that uh, everything that was not working in the two categorical case cannot work in the infinity setting either, and and also it gives some intuition on how we could try to uh, implement the same definition in the infinity setting. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, so if now I start with an infinity two category, we need a two-fold complete single space, and I take some map into my two-fold complete single space, then I can define an infinity two limit. And sorry, what is k now? <coughs> it's just a bisimplicial space. So an infinity two limit of f is a terminal object in the double infinity category, of course. And so again, the double infinity category can be defined as the same pullback. And so here, uh, this is a pullback of by simplicial spaces. And so is I the same as K? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and so um, here what's happening is that two full complete single spaces is not a Cartesian closed. So this map is actually not a vibration of two full complete single space, but it's like a vibration of double infinity categories, and so in particular, this guy will have like non-trivial vertical morphisms again. And so same for this guy, so this is not a two-fold complete single space, but it is a double infinity category. So it doesn't satisfy this 
extra condition of uh, completeness, which tells you that your uh, infinity one category of objects is discrete. Okay, so now we have a definition and uh, we want to compare it with the uh, average definition that we had at the beginning. as it was done in the infinity one case. So here the first problem is that there are actually no direct equivalent equivalents between the enriched model that we were considering at the beginning and this model of two full complete single space. But uh, Bernard and Rest, they showed that there is just a zigzag. There is a zigzag of equivalent equivalences. between these complete single space and rich categories and some model in the middle uh, and two for complete single spaces. So this is the first uh, issue in the comparison and the way we fixed it is by actually defining some kind of homotopy Corinthian. So So there is a homotopy for it now, which is analogous to the one that I was talking about uh, before. And it goes from enriched categories in simple space to bijective spaces. And the nice thing about this term is that uh, it takes an enriched, sending a CSS enriched category to uh, Siegel objects in complete Siegel space. So it does not send it to a two-fold complete Siegel space, so it's not really equivalent equivalence, but the Siegel objects in complete Siegel space is good enough to actually study the limits. Um, so we don't need uh, to actually make it complete. Okay, so that's the first step. And then, in order to have this comparison between the entry setting and the uh, internal setting, uh, what we need is another uh, theorem, which is uh, not quite the theorem, uh, but we think it might be. So we are close to prove it. So there is another equivalent equivalence. Uh, between, so if we start with a C, again, a CSS and H category, then there's a equivalent equivalence between the category of enriched functors from C into uh, complete single spaces, uh, which is some kind of straightening and straightening. So straightening and straightening. Uh, to the slice category of by simplicial space over the homotopy in of C. And so here, uh, this is like a model structure for functors, but this one is more like a model structure for double infinity vibrations. So model for double infinity vibrations. And so again, these double infinity categories, they, they appear in this uh, equivalent equivalence as well. And, uh, and so as a corollary, we could then obtain the desired result, namely that if we start with a map into the homotopy current map, which corresponds under an adjunction to an enriched functor, 
then uh, limit of f in two full complex sequence spaces. So this was the internal definition that uh, corresponds to a limit of fb in a complete single space and rich category. And this would be like the end of the So this is our strategy for, for the proof. Um, and that's all that to say about the case and equals two. And so in the last five minutes, I'll try to briefly explain how this also works in the infinity and Any questions? very uh, similar to the case in equals 2. So um, in a similar way that I can see in infinity 2 categories and internal categories to infinity 1 category with uh, discrete infinity 1 category of objects, I can do something similar for infinity n category. And I can say an infinity n category is an internal category to infinity n minus 1 categories. So again, modeled by some single object uh, with discrete in a homotopical sense uh, infinity and minus one category of objects. And so this in particular gives an inclusion of infinity and categories into these internal categories into infinity and minus one categories, and then an infinity and limit would be defined as a terminal object in the internal category, uh, internal category two, infinity and minus one category of those. And so uh, one thing to notice here is that actually um, we we don't need the, the full uh, like unfold infinity category, but like just an internal category to infinity and minus one categories is enough. And uh, the way then that, that we would like to compare it to this uh, enriched definition that we could also make for infinity and limits is by again having some kind of homotopy current nav. Uh, this also generalizes to more shapes than just like complete serial spaces and then this would give uh, the comparison. And I just want to end with two uh, remarks. So first, the first remark is that we actually do uh, weighted limits. So not just the conical one that I've been talking about. And so this recovers, for example, the case of uh, lapse limits. And uh, because there are special cases of weighted limits, and uh, the second remark uh, is that um, with a uh, Hingman, uh, we actually have a fully two categorical uh, characterization of the limit. So in the strict case. two limits in terms of two terminal objects, but this evolves to actually not look at a slice, but a shifted slice, where the, morph the objects are actually the morphisms between cones in terms of two terminal objects. And so with uh, Nima and Martina, uh, we also aim to um, bring this definition into the infinity setting in order to have something which is really just fully defined into infinity two categories. 
And hopefully this would give some kind of model independent definition of uh, infinity. And I guess that's all I had to say. Thank you.